As with a lot of uh, equipment of this sort of age, when it's approaching sort of 35, 40 years, it's started to become a bit sort of not unreliable so much as it's getting close to the point where it's sort of not reaching calibration anymore. Um, and particularly this spectrum analyzer has caused a few problems. One of the faults it's recently developed is I can't do the calibration run anymore. From the uh, There's a calibration routine where you take the, a minus 10 dBm output from the calibration socket here and feed it into its input and adjust this calibrator um, potentiometer to the correct level at minus 10 dBm. Now I can't I can't achieve that. It um, it almost looks like it's not adjusting correctly, or there's something wrong with an attenuator or something. Um, I've looked at the output on the uh, scope and can't really work out if the level's correct or not, so I need to look into that. The other problem um, that hasn't actually quite shown its face is it's it's got a YTO unlock, um, which is a YIG um, oscillator. And that's a, a known problem with these uh, d devices. Now there's a couple of things that can actually fix that. Uh, and that's a potentiometer that's on one of the boards that's actually got um, prone to being a bad joint, a bad connection, like a noisy pot. Sort of just touching that will actually sort of create the problem, in which case the pot needs cleaning. Um, but there are a number of tantalum capacitors, or certainly look like wet tantalum capacitors in, on the board. Um, certainly in the YIG oscillator and, and in one of the other um, one of the other uh, areas where it runs quite hot. It's, now the great thing about the internet of course is you can find all this information out. It, I mean obviously capacitors in a unit this old are going to be not at their best to say the least and probably some of them have actually pretty totally dried up. So I need to look at that. But let me just demonstrate the problem first of all with the uh, calibration routine. Let's start it up. Wait for the display to come up. And you see the oven cold lights on, which is fine. That just basically means that the, uh, the unit hasn't reached uh, temperature yet, so the crystal, crystal controlled oscillator isn't up to the frequency. Um, I've adjusted that last night to the correct frequency. Uh, it was only slightly out, but um, you can see on the display there, okay. Just zoom in a little bit so you can see a bit, for, a bit nearer to the display. Um, the oscillator, the control oscillator is running spot on once it's up to temperature. The other problem it did have, and it hasn't done it this, today, so I might have repaired that, it's got an internal backup battery, which is basically three uh, NICAD batteries. And all that does is store um, data and calibration data and setups in the, set, in the calibration routines and things like that. It's got a couple of non volatile. Um, memory positions and there for the calibration but for saving like setups like you would in quite a lot of bits of equipment like on a lot of the more or the later sort of HP scopes where you can save and recall settings and you've got it stores your trick points and things you can do that with this instrument but it relies on this backup battery um, and when I got the instrument I got a spare battery with it uh, I put it in there and the con connections on the battery holder are pretty corroded so I cleaned them all up and put, put the battery in and it seemed to work okay for a short period and it came back to the same problem where it said it's lost its battery or low battery warning light comes up on the display. Funny enough, it hasn't actually done that today because what I've done is I've I had another look at the battery connections and they were all corroded up and then when I went to touch one it just snapped off. So basically I've soldered straight to the battery um, and obviously that's worked because it's a uh, I haven't come up with that error message, yes, so that's good. So let me show you what I'm talking about this calibration routine. Now, you connect the calibrated output and then you feed you run through the calibration routine so what you have to do is recall 9 so recall sorry recall 8 and you can see here what, I'm, what I should be seeing is a minus 10 dB um, signal I don't know if you can see that because it's actually quite bright sunlight Let's get you a bit nearer to the screen so you can see what's happening because the sun's, sun's come out for a change and it's a... there we go. So really this signal should be down well be, well below this point. And any adjustment I make to the calibrated output, um, the amplitude calibration, it doesn't affect the uh, 
affect the level. Now what I'm trying to work out is if that's a problem with the uh, input sensitivity or oh, it's actually the calibrator output levels are wrong. Um, let's try a different frequency span. So we've got a frequency span of 2 megs at the moment. Let's go to 1 meg. It still seems to think the level's the same. So bring our reference point down. And we'll go peak search. So it's saying the marker's at minus 4 dBm. Okay, so let's go to a narrow, let's go to 1 kilohertz. Peak search. Um, reference level down. I'm going to be able to bring it in that far. Let's go back to 1 meg. Peak search. So, yeah, we've got a. This is the marker's at 18.9 megahertz, so it's obviously not quite up to frequency. And you see it jumping around. Now, if I try and adjust that pot there, I don't think you'll find it will do anything. There you go, nothing at all. Now, that to me suggests that the calibrated output's not calibrated anymore. Um, the jumping around bit could be the output from the generator, the um, calibrated output socket is faulty, or it's, it's got an erratic output. <clears throat> Excuse me, so I think that's easy enough to fix. We could, or confirm, we could put that on a scope and have a look at the output and see if the output is stable. As you see, it certainly doesn't look very stable at the moment. But, um, as I said, the other thing is the YTO unlock. Now, it hasn't actually come up with that error message, but when it's running, if you look on the underside of the, the control unit, it's got a, the, the YTO unlock is actually flashing away. And it's a sure sign it's about to very be, become very close to failing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bottom of the board off, take the unit apart, and uh, whip some of the screws out and see if we can find any of these electrolytic capacitors that are prone to failing. This is the oscillator, main oscillator part of the, uh, or the sweep generator of the uh, spectrum analyzer. Um, and you can see these are works of art, as, as all the Hewlett Packard bits of equipment were in this day. Uh, lovely laid out beautifully. Perspex covers to protect all the cables when you're working on them. Um, everything's labelled, there's warning lights, um, calibration points. It's really a lovely piece of equipment. That's really the main reason why I'm so in interested in keeping these sort of things going. And people have spent hours and hours building these bits of equipment um, and I think they deservedly should be kept, kept going, um, should be kept looked after and, and all right I know a lot of people don't use spectrum analyzer that, that much and, and neither do I to be honest with you but um, when I do use it it's it's a joy to use as as I say with all the Hewlett Packard stuff um, I'd like to say that the British stuff is uh, is good but the Marconi is nothing like that inside this is uh, this is a step ahead and even Roden Schwartz I don't think Roden Schwartz was as nice as this either Anyway, you can see inside, um, it's all pretty sort of straightforward. There's not a lot of caps in here, but the first cap I came across, which was of any consequence, was this uh, wet tantalum here. It's a 300 microfarad at, uh, what is it? 100, well, no, is it? No, it's not a 300, it's a, it looks like 100 at 25 micro, no, it's 100 microfarads at 25 volts. Anyway, I've connected it up to the uh, LCR bridge and it's totally open, it's not even registering on the uh, scale. So that cap's shot, so that's a good start. So I'm going to replace that capacitor um, and that will probably, hopefully, fix the uh, the sweep problem with the, uh, or the, 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 the YTO unlock problem coming up. So I'm going to change that capacitor and um, we'll see what we get. Well it looks like I can't get the um display to fail. So I'm um, moving on to the problem it's had for a while that I've sort of ignored because I didn't exactly understand what the control did. And that is the control at the bottom of the unit here. And we can see this pot under the, the dim shadows. And it's not very good light at the moment. It's, you can see this pot here, it says amplitude calibration. Um, and what that does is actually adjust the uh, input attenuator of, of the unit basically. Now what you do is you recall uh, uh, save channel 8, so you press recall 8 and you connect the calibration uh, port as you see here to the input and you adjust that pot 
for minus 10 dBm. Now I can't get any adjustment on that at all, so obviously something's failed here. And I've been trying to look into how to repair this. Now it takes a bit of a contorted route, um, and this is the uh, this is the basic the, the schematic of the front panel. And here's our uh, adjustment pot here. So basically, all this pot does is this side of the pot's connected to ground. This side of the pot is connected to a plus 15 supply, and this is the centre wiper that goes off to reference level and that feeds off to the motherboard. So basically what that does is goes from 0 to 15 volts depending on the position of the pot. So that's fairly straightforward. So basically all that is is a is a programmable voltage. Now follow it through on the mother on the motherboard circuit diagram, which is this, this big circuit here. I printed all these out from the manual so it means I can highlight them and things. This is the connector you see on the front panel, or it leaves the front panel and goes to the, so this, this connection here, um, the XA5P1 on the A26 board, which is the A26 is the motherboard, there it goes there, and it comes through here, down, and its first port of call is board 22, um, P2, now what that means is, it's, uh, It'll be the A22 board and it'll be on the plug 2. So we're looking for plug 2 and it's on pin 3. And on the A22, this is our first stop, is hopefully this board here, which I've printed out as well on A3, so it's a bit easier to see. Now, what you can see is quite a straightforward system here. It comes into this comparator circuit here, um, an op amp sort of thing. And there's our signal coming in here. You can see that the non -in the inverting signal here is held down by a uh, looks like a 15 volt reference. Well, 15 volt supply here. I'm not sure the voltage of this center diode. Um, and we're applying a variable voltage here from 0 to 15 volts. And what that will do is we'll adjust the level of this output here. So the first thing I need to do, um, I think, is to just possibly with an ohmmeter and probably do some static checks. Put a put a um, an ohmmeter on. Uh, between pin 10 of this chip or even pin uh, two, uh, pin 13 on socket 2 of the board underneath and ohm it back to the pot. Um, now, I don't know how easy that's going to be because that means I've got to remove the front panel again and the unit's in situ at the moment, but what I can probably do is buzz it through to the motherboard. So I'm going to do that. Um, and ascertain that there is actually some sort of physical connection, there's not like a bad joint, uh, and then have a look at the output of these, uh, this um, op amp and see if this level's changing. I expect a level shift on uh, what it looks like pin 8, and, and I'm hoping maybe if I look underneath there'll be some sort of test point. Okay, what I've done is I've connected up a uh, flying lead uh, to the uh, this point here, and I've actually connected the positive end of this capacitor um, and that goes back to the sent the wiper of the, the control on the front of the unit so what I'm expecting to see when I power the unit up is a, a, a voltage there to start with and obviously if I adjust the pot the voltage shifts from more or less zero volts all the way up to approximately 15 it probably won't go quite to 15 volts um, it's got a bit, of, a bit of a load on it so let's try that. This is the meter down on the floor here. Um, and it's uh, presently showing 0 volts as the wire's running up and working underneath the unit. So switch it on. Okay, we've got 2 volts. So that's a sign that something's coming through. Now, what I'm expecting to see, if I adjust this amplitude calibration with the right type of screwdriver, there's the top end of the screwdriver when you want it. So we're just in the calibration pot now. I expect to see this voltage shift, which it does. There you go. So we've got a voltage shift there, so that's reassuring. That's the first step of making sure there's your 15 volts. It's fully anti clockwise, there's 0 volts. That's working well. Um, and let me just show you what you're supposed to do on the thing. You press recall 8. And this marker point here should be at minus 10 dB, and you see it's off the scale. So there's, so you can see it's on the scale. It's off the scale at the moment. So there's clearly something wrong with the adjustment. And if you turn the, um, let's bring the attenuator on and try that. No, wrong one, sorry. Let's bring the reference level down. 
and adjust it you'll see that there's no shift at all in output which it used to do so there's clearly something wrong you can see that the, the voltage is shifting there but that's that's not working so what we need to do now is we need to remove the board again and look at the uh, output of that chip